How are you guys doing today? Welcome to the show. This is going to be about uh, the interview that was done on American Cholo with Little Dave. It was titled The Aftermath. And I would just want to highlight the channel real quick. Uh, American Cholo, great stuff. You know what? It had to be one of the best interviews that i seen on YouTube in a very long time. Again, American Cholo, go over there. Like and subscribe to the channel. And what it had to do with was Little Dave and what has happened since his first interview. Everybody knows that interview about uh, what happened uh, with the Mongols and him. And one thing I have to say right now is the Mongols do not deserve all this all over the place, all over the internet. Uh, for those that are haters of the Mongols, imagine your club being put in this position with all this being aired out, all the dirty laundry and stuff being aired out all over the internet. I couldn't imagine what the club is going through right now especially a club that has been around since the 60s have a very good reputation and this right here must be something else for them but we're going to get into both sides of the story on this one and well you know what i'll say that in a second let's i'll roll it <laughs> Okay, we are back. One thing I do have to say is, yeah, I might be old school. It might not be the same today. But it used to be when a member of a club, especially a patch one, gave their word or gave you information it was supposed to be for pure reasons it wasn't to backstab somebody it was supposed to be true there was supposed to be no lies whatsoever in what they were saying we took their word as being truthful it seems nowadays that isn't the case isn't the case at all. And I learned that the hard way. Everybody knows I try my best to defend clubs in the media. Do my best. So I'm going to take a word of a person that is wearing a patch over anybody else's. That was my mistake and that was my wrong. A lot has been going on with this and it's terrible to see what's going down right now it really is i'll show you some clips from the interview let little dave get his side of the story out which is very interesting very interesting what he put out but you have to watch the entire interview to be able to get the gist of it Again, these are just news clips. That's what I consider them. And a lot of people do not do their research when it comes to this kind of stuff. It's automatic. And you know what? I'm guilty. I'm guilty as charged of taking a word of a patch holder. Now, is there? could there be more behind it? Yeah, sure. But I just wanted to put that out there before even going on with this. Because it is a sad state of affairs. And I actually feel really bad for them. Because I look at a club's history and say, you know what? They really earned what they have. Especially starting out in the 60s. The umbrella of 
profiling that they're going through right now is unbelievable. The patch case ain't over, people. It's still in the Ninth Circuit of Appeals. So there's a long way ahead to go. And this kind of stuff could be used by them, the government, against clubs. But one thing I do know, 100%, is their charge against the Mongols, the government now I'm talking about, them being a criminal organization, them being a motorcycle gang, is all bull. It is bull. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, I'm only speaking from the Midwest area of Chicago. I don't know how they do it on the West Coast, East Coast. But if this stuff was going on, if there was even a hint of somebody being an informant in a gang in a criminal organization they already would have been taken out no ifs ands or buts that's how a gang in a criminal organization acts this is a motorcycle club even though weakness according to some people were sh was showed or Informant stuff was being thrown around by membership. Nobody has gotten hurt. So that right there should prove to everyone that the Mongols are not a gang. They are a motorcycle club. Yeah, does beefs happen? Are people going through that kind of stuff where things pop off? Yes. That's just men being men. It's unfortunate that, you know, people get killed over those beefs or hurt, but that is individuals that do that kind of stuff. It's not the club as a whole. So what I want to do is just bring up some highlights, give my opinion, but again, I want you to go over to American Cholo and check this out. Now the first clip, and this is all in the public sphere now, so don't come after me. Hey, that's uh, club business. It's in the public sphere. We're covering it as news because it's something everybody wanted to know about. This has to do with Dave bringing up some bombshells. Some real big bombshells. And at the end, I'll show a clip and that'll give you notice of what Dave's situation is with the club. Even though it's none of our business, it was again put out on the internet for everybody to see. And what is my thoughts about that? Well, here's a guy who is trying to clear his name. And he needs an outlet to do that. That's what us as creators do is give a platform for those that want to be on to get a word out. Remember that. So here's the first one. And this has to do with the one that Dave claims is causing all the problems. So what happened was he was in bed with... Like three other defendants, right? Now, now, wait, before we go, this is case is closed and not ongoing. Done. It's, okay, okay, just making sure. Dude didn't take it to the box because cooperating witnesses and testimony from Robert A. Drizlin Jr. And that is? Uh, Bobby D? Bobby D. Okay, Bobby D is the one at Little Dave says pushed him out that started all this stuff used the video and that was the video i refused to air i won't do that there was a 53 second clip by somebody that was put out on youtube the original video people is over four minutes long so you know 
but Dave's claim is Bobby D used it against him to get him out. So that's what that clip was all about, was Bobby D being, in, according to little Dave, an informant, rat, whatever you want to say, and he does have the paperwork on that. Let's listen more. And that's what you bring That's here. his government name. Okay. And, and <laughs> this is the stuff you're saying, right? That's the start of it. And that's one of three meetings with federal agents. All right. One of three at the McDonald's by his dad's house in Downey. Bring it up. All right. All right. All right. I read this real quick? Fuck yeah. There's more. Trust me. Okay. So this is what we got. This is from the Department of Treasury Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigation Memorandum of Interview. Uh, some stuff's blacked out. It, the location was a McDonald's restaurant, 9250 Lakewood Boulevard, Downey, California. Shout out to McDonald's. The original. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, huh? Yep. On the above date and approximate time, Special a Agent yep. Adrian Yepes, S.A. Yepes, which is Special Agent, and Richard Nadas, S.A. Nadas, of Eternal Revenue Service Criminal Investigation, yep. met with Robert Dreisel Jr. That's who you you're Bobby saying? D. Bobby, Bobby D. Presents. D. At McDonald's yeah. in Downey, California. That's right. This was the second interview of mm -hmm. Dreisler by the special agent Nadas and special agent Yepes. The first interview occurred on August 31st, 2017. So this is the second time these guys have met. Of the, yeah, 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 yeah. So Nadas explained the purpose of the meeting was to obtain additional information related to the studio farming investment in Dreisler's concert company and to follow up on information received during the first interview. Correct. Dreisler was told... The interview was voluntary and that he was free to leave at any time. Exactly. He was also informed that he was not the target of the investigation and that it was important to be truthful with his answers and not to minimize information. Right. Dreiser stated that he understood, provided the following information in response to the agent's question. Wow. Yeah, let, yeah, me, let elaborate me elaborate on that. On that. And, and, and that's, that's what you're what you That's, that's his government name. Okay. And, and <laughs> this is the stuff you're saying, right? That's the start of it. And, and that's again he brought paperwork i just wanted to go back and forth to give uh you know these buttons suck but uh anyway he didn't meet with uh treasury agents which is a federal branch of the government he was not the target of the investigation meaning they were using his testimony to get some others and charge them with federal offenses very important to note that now i don't know the outcome of the case i don't know what the club knew i'm just presenting it from my point of view as why didn't you lawyer up but it is what it is it's not my uh place to say hey did he do it right or wrong uh that is for the club to decide Let's keep going. Yeah, let me elaborate on that. So if any federal agent approaches you and you don't want to incriminate yourself, you know what you do on the streets, right? Lawyer up. If they take you to jail, cuff you, lawyer up. So he had three visits from these special agents, part of the Treasury Department, special agents for the feds, which they were building a case. So... What happens in a case like this, they need a cooperator. And they use Bobby as a cooperator in order to indict this individual on charges, which if you can read the charges at the bottom of the page, left corner is what they charged that defendant with. And then counts. Attempt to evade and defeat the assessment and payment of income tax penalty for an offense committed while on release. Right. So, and it's a felony, right? Yeah, it's a felony. Okay. So, basically, the government was charging the other parties with a felony. Criminally, not civilly. So, what does that mean? That means that there was a cooperating witness. Again, I don't know the outcome of that case. All I can go on is what they were reading from that paperwork. 
So is it coming into play that little Dave was set up? They he the video was used against them. Now was it a power play? I don't know. Does it happen in clubs all the time? Which I never understood because clubs were supposed to be a brotherhood. It wasn't never supposed to be where it was going to be about power. But things change, I guess. Just like I said earlier, how when a member gave their word, it was supposed to be gold. And boy, am I upset with that one. I, I tell you with uh, what I was fed. <laughs> anyway, it was supposed to be the word you were supposed to take it. So Dave continues to present his evidence. This is what, basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up in a nutshell really quick, and we'll go on to some more paperwork that's very, very just... Wow, it's it's a shocker. It's disgusting, and what what, what happened? This was this was a. Uh, uh, and now this is the guy who was pretty much accusing you of ex snitching. Yes, exactly. Oh wow. That was the guy that was accusing him of snitching, the one with the paperwork. Now, according to Dave. The paperwork and the knowledge of this case was not known to the club. So you got to draw your own conclusions on this. Again, these are just clips. Just clips. You need to see the entire interview. Now, there was a post on this video and I wanted to address this because there's always two sides and you kind of can tell that it was a member or whatever ex-member that wrote this and it's a sad state of affairs something like this would be put out in the media or general public because it's going to get covered. But I wanted to give you my thoughts before you go over there and say, well, this person, that, that person, that. Everybody's innocent until proven guilty. That I know very well now after the first incident. And you know what? I said in it in my uh, one of my other videos, I shouldn't have just took the word of membership shouldn't have done it because I didn't know there was a civil war going on within that club hopefully everything's getting better for him but this is messed up anyway let's go and take a look at this comment that was put up on that video the patches on his cut ain't even dirty that should have told you all something, but I can tell just based on what a lot of these comments in favor of this clown are saying that they never been around the club. Little Dave is getting a taste of his own medicine and what he has been doing to brothers for years. People that didn't vote for him would get dirtied up and put out on bad. He had a huge ego. What man doesn't? He never did none of the shit he claims. He wasn't a tough guy growing up. I wish I can upload it pictures of him on here. I have and let you decide. You guys see him with muscles on steroids and Mongols gear on and think he looks the part around the club. He always had a crew around him to protect him and he's not going to the same bars or doing none of that. That's a damn lie. The reason they may not have paperwork on him is because he works with the feds. Feds can make anything happen. People should know that. Feds ain't going to drop paperwork on the guy helping them. That's uh, the only valid point I see so far. Because in a RICO case, it can take years until a defendant uh, attorney uncovers what's going on. 
Where is the paperwork about all this dirt he claims to have done? Aside from some weak-ass DUIs and minor things your average Joe can do, he definitely lived off club money. Him and his wife, that bail bond shit hasn't been bailing anyone out for years and years. Shit in that old office was full of dust, and that's facts. Little Dave hasn't been working for years. Ask for his pay stubs. What brothers did they bail out? He stole club money 100%. The club paid for Annie's plastic surgeries. There's daughter shit. Three to four bikes. More than 50k each. Rolls Royce. You want to talk to someone who knows, talk to their tax guy. He knows. Little Dave was hard up for money. Up in club dues and club patches. Patches he never earned, by the way. There was so much real shit not spoke on here. Do you think anyone is going to show up at his house right away knowing the feds are protecting him? He is doing all this t I'm a tough guy shit because he is protected. And af and he you were here in one side from a rat. And it goes on and on and on. And he also says he paid 99 cents to pull an old report on Bobby D that's been done and closed. He was national P and barely saw this? He was tongue-tied on the 12,000 money questions deflecting it on other brothers. You're going to see that comment. You're going to see it on that video. And the one thing I want you guys to realize is... A lot of those allegations he responded to in that video, in that interview. So you have to watch the entire thing to understand his side of the equation. All those that were just read out loud were addressed by him. Those that are asking if he's still in the club or not, that's probably going to be your biggest question. Here it is. Oh, are the you still Mongol? Oh, shit. You <laughs> sidelined me. Yeah. You right. sidelined me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, so technically on the books, yes. I'm no longer a member. Right. But that's, uh, it's a tough one because I never got my day in court, my due process. And again, that's why I have to reach out to a platform like American Cholo, to basically air out what's been going on without putting too much shit out there. Because I'm not bashing on the club. I love the club. The club's fucking family to me. It's, it, it's what I've known for 25 years. It's a lifestyle. It's a culture. And I got robbed of that because people wanted my seat. Basically, bottom line. Okay, there you have it. He is no longer a member of the Mongols. I think he did say during the interview that he would like to be out good, retired, all that good stuff uh, that comes with retirement. So there's your answer on that. I don't have an opinion either way. I'm just covering it as I can with news the best I can straight down the middle. The loser in the end is the club. Because their history is just so immense that this kind of stuff is being played out. And it's going to be used by the haters of clubs. It's going to be used by Leo. And Leo is going to try to push their way in and use this against them. So in the comments section, let me know what you guys think. And let me know if you guys actually listened to the interview. Very important stuff. Very important stuff. Hopefully it all works out for everybody involved. But one thing I do know is the Mongols are not a gang. Because any organized crime syndicate, any uh, hardcore street gang... Bodies would be laying around right now. And that's straight up. So it is an MC. Not no damn gang because gangs do that kind of shit. I'm out of here, guys. Let me know your thoughts.
Go over to ProudHooligan.com for all your Insane Throttle official merchandise, including our new Proud Hooligan line. ProudHooligan.com has a wide assortment of gear to make you look good on your next ride. ProudHooligan.com is the go-to for every biker when they want to look good as well as to help the show out while doing it. Visit ProudHooligan.com now. Rock on. They run in while you run out. Support the National Fallen Firefighters Fund by donating right here on YouTube. Click the donate button now. The mission of the National Fallen Firefighters Fund is to honor and remember Americans fallen by your heroes, to provide resources and assist their families in rebuilding their lives, and work within the fire service community to reduce firefighter deaths and injuries.